We rarely equate agriculture and music. These were, you know, instrumental uh, pieces of crops that also created a nice rhythm. Oh, and you said this was this was the precursor from West Africa to the guitar. And this is mm -hmm. what is this called again? Uh, you can call it the core, the African banjo. Uh, we do at banjo workshops here at the farm. Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah, every couple of weeks, um, and you know it does give you a sense of the importance of music, even for the enslaved Africans who were here. Uh, they still maintain this musical culture, mm -hmm. uh, and when the drum was banned. They turn to instruments like this where they could create their own rhythms to help them through that situation. Yeah, and so tell me a little bit more about this place and your family's legacy here in Central Virginia and the reason why you're keeping all of these things alive in your life now. Well, this place here we're at is, uh, we call it the home place or the Ponderosa Carter Farms. My great-great-grandparents uh, purchased this property November 5th, 1910. A lot of African-Americans who own land along this area. So this is our little version of Black Wall Street in our community. And I believe you are an 11th generation farmer, is that correct? I say 11th generation. Our history in America goes back to it the latest 1745, possibly the earliest 1622 or even beforehand. Oh, wow. Um, our family, some portion of our family was enslaved at the oldest plantation in America, which is our Shirley Plantation. There's a lot that connects us in terms of food and food ways, and these African crops tell a different story about our relationship with the land that can really challenge the stigma of slavery and our thoughts about slavery and agriculture. Crops and seeds were kind of like all that most of the enslaved people had when they came here. A lot of them put them in their hair or they came from this on the ships because they had to eat something. So things like the cowpea, which they called the cowpea because they the colonists didn't feel like they were suitable for human consumption, so they fed it to the cows. Mm -hmm. It became a staple in our community, as well as the cowpea leaves or the black eyed peas we know it today. Things like uh, okra, gumbo. Uh, the Senegal name, Senegalese name for okra is gumbo. So when you're calling it gumbo, you're just calling it okra stew. That's what they really were oh, making at the time. Wow. Uh, this is Celosia uh, or feather copscomb, or what's known as Nigerian spinach or Lego spinach. Uh, we're growing this here for multiple purposes. Uh, one, the Celosia that we know uh, is usually used as an ornamental. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know, the one that's grown in West Africa uses an edible as a food. So you can actually eat the leaves. Uh, it gets to be about six to seven feet tall, sometimes eight feet tall. And this particular plant I see as a solution for climate change. Uh, it's a climate smart vegetable. It uh, doesn't require any irrigation, it's drought tolerant, uh, and insect resistant, most importantly deer and rabbit resistant. Oh, that's the vein of a lot of gardeners' uh, gardeners' existence. So tell me about this. What would you use this for? This is amaranth. Uh, there's about several hundred different varieties of amaranth. Uh, the amaranth that we grow is used for cultivation of leaves, for eating. Uh, this variety that's known as Callaloo in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, it's used as a stew. Uh, amaranth can also be grown for grain you know, to create breads, flowers, and things like that. Uh, amaranth is another one of those natural plants that are fairly drought resistant. Uh, another climate smart plant. Unfortunately, the insects and the rabbits and deer kind of like those a little bit, uh, but it's another great green that provides a lot of nutrition because it's a long tap root. Uh, so you get the extra vitamin A, vitamin C, uh, some of the other micronutrients out of these vegetables. That's yeah. really interesting. Um, can you tell me a little bit about this and what this, the significance is of this to you? Uh, this is probably my favorite green. Uh, really? <laughs> this is called, uh, it's called Inca Tumuri in Ghana, West Africa in the tree language, uh, but it's also known as taro. Coco yam in Hawaii, they refer to it as poi. Oh, okay. Um, and this particular leaf, again, is a drought tolerant leaf. Uh, a lot of us grow it and know it as elephant ear. Mm -hmm. This particular variety that we have is actually edible. A lot of the ones that you get from big, big box stores and nurseries are not edible. They have variegated leaves, hybridized for leaf color. Don't eat the purple and the pink and the white leaves. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this particular dish has oxalic acid in it, so you have to cook it before you eat it. Mm -hmm. But when it's cooked and cooked well, it's outstanding. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah. Now, can you tell me a little bit about how you use these things here at Carter Farm in an educational way mm -hmm. to pass that knowledge on to the next generation? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, a nonprofit is called Africulture. Mm -hmm. uh, and Africulture is the principles, practices, plants, and people of African descent that's contributed and continues to contribute to agriculture worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, so we tie in various stories, various food ways, of you know things that we never would consider are African crops. Cotton is an African crop. Indigo is an African crop. You put those two together, and you have now Levi Strauss or American denim, or cocoa, or vanilla, or even Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Within Coca Cola, we, most of us know that Coca Cola has cocaine in it or the cocoa plant in it. Uh -huh. But the cola comes from the cola nut, which comes out of West Africa. Oh. They just spell it differently. K O L A as opposed to C O L A. 
Oh my goodness, I had no idea. Yeah. You're dropping some knowledge on me here today. There's a lot of history within a lot of those crops. Uh, would it be gumbo slash okra? Mm -hmm. uh, would it be red beans and rice? Would it be you know peppers and, and even rice itself? We try to tell those stories because I think a lot of that has been missed in our terms of our food ways and our cultural ways of sharing the stories, the value of those stories, uh, and the value of the contributions again to, to agriculture from those people of Africa, especially West Africa. And I strongly believe that there are nutritional and health um, benefits to eating these crops. Uh, everybody has a different genetic profile. So we have working on this concept of eating for your ethnic type, mm -hmm. where you can challenge various uh, health issues by eating the proper foods. Uh, so for Africans, we need to be eating more African foods in our diets to ensure that we get the proper genetic expression from those foods into our body to help us live and be healthier long term. It's really beautiful because you're almost saying that food is medicine, both for your body and almost your soul, too, oh. because it's connecting you to your ancestors and everyone that came before you. Absolutely. And it you're is, preserving yeah. it for them, too. It, it, it is medicine. And it's medicine, like you said, to your soul. And then when you start incorporating things like being outside, getting your vitamin D, getting fresh air, uh, and then listening to the birds and getting your ears acclimated to nature again. Uh, those are things that are healing in a way that we really can't quantify, mm -hmm. but you have a better value and appreciation of life. And I think that's what society is missing a lot more today is the value of all life. Plant something for the stranger. Yeah. You know, so ideally, you know, you want to be able to plant something and a stranger may not always be a person, mm -hmm. you know, especially as development happens more and more, but we, you know, build more and more in places that we haven't in the past. Nature has to go somewhere mm -hmm. and ultimately they have to eat something. So being able to provide these type of things for nature as well uh, and conserving certain things to make sure that we still have a balanced ecosystem because ecosystem, that becomes a part of our sustainability on this planet. And if we don't do that, we're going to be not here as long as we want to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because in my culture, we say that the insects and the animals and all of the living things around us are our kin too. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we also focus on as well is going past what we know as, you know, who you care for. Yes. So we grow on the farm here, we try to grow microorganisms, you know, so we try to grow the soil, uh, we try to grow, you know, various insects and pollinators as well as farmers, because mm -hmm. we have to really embody individuals to return back to the farm. Yeah. Uh, black farmers at this point are almost an endangered species. Mm -hmm. And with any endangered species, you need to really readdress what is the environment that made them endangered and then redress that to try to bring them back. So that's what we try to do here is try to uh, create an environment that they feel much more at home. Mm -hmm. where we can see the value of what we're growing and the value in terms of nutrition, in terms of culture, in terms of history, in terms of music, in terms of art, uh, they're all interconnected. And I think, you know, our, our cultures are very much similar uh, in terms of how we see and appreciate nature and the wholeness of being one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, so this farm tries to embody that as well. It's really amazing because it's basically your ancestors transformed American culture as a whole through all of these things that you touch on. And through adversity. Yes. You know, and, and, and through adversity and we use it without formal education. Mm -hmm. um, so that becomes another, you know, thing that we share is like, you know, you can do more because you had more, because they did a lot more with a lot less. Yes, that's really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all of these things with us today, Michael. Thank you.